Father in heaven, we bless you for this wonderful fellowship of your sons coming together for fellowship. And we thank you because of the wonderful things you have blessed us with as we have been together here. Both young and old, we have been blessed. With all the tools, the instruments you have used. And we know that you have a purpose for our lives. Important in your hands. Important that you could give your son to die for our sins. To you, Lord, because today has been a remarkable day in our lives. Those things you have done in us, those things you have spoken to us concerning the ambition, concerning the diseases, and all those things we need to avoid in our lives, as well as establish in our lives. Help us to do those things that are required of us in Jesus' name. Praying that today. Come in your presence. Break the bread of life to us in Jesus' name. I pray that today, by your word, give a new orientation, a new direction, a new vision, a new uh, sense of purpose to every one of your sons in Jesus' name. In meaningless, purposeless living before. Change all that today in Jesus' name. Begin a good work in our lives today. Keep on walking until we shall see you face to face. Cooperate with you as you walk in our lives. Because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's sons shall say, Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be with you, though not in flesh and blood. As I've watched, as I've observed, and as I've uh, so, seeing in the spirit how you have been doing and everything, I can see that everybody has been blessed. You have been blessed today in this men's fellowship, and you like us to have another one again. Can I see you under? I mean sincerely, you are really blessed. I see you under. And no it's okay. Tell the person next to you and say, God bless you for being here today. God bless you for being here today. Okay, one more thing you will tell him. I've enjoyed fellowship with you today. Say it again. Look in his eyes. Why are you looking that? Look in his eyes while you are saying it. I've enjoyed fellowship with you today. Say that. All right. One more thing you will tell him. Eyes and tell him, I love you and I know God loves you too. Say it to him. Okay, now rise up, fellow of you. I want you to put your hand on your chest. Tell yourself. I thank you, God. That I'm a man. I thank you, God. You made me a man. I thank you, God. There's no other man like me. I thank you, God. You have a purpose for my life. I promise you, God. I will leave that purpose. Say that. Say it I promise you, God, I will leave that purpose. Amen. 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 Yes, to be seated. This morning I'd like to share with you on an important message. Man is God's strategy. 
la aro yi mo be ba mo be bu ni wa so se pataki lopo lopo o na re o o ko rin o ni ogbo ti olorun ma is god's strategy o eniyan ni ogbo olorun you can even say it like this i am god's strategy to so ba yi lona mi ran wi pe emi gan ni ogbo olorun you don't know what that means o mo tu mo ye that means when people talk about strategy ba ba so ni pa ogbo metal ona ta n gba se nkan think things down lati gbe nkan se metal awon ogbo wisdom ogbo for achieving great things lati ni on to to bi they talk about strategy an so ni pa ogbo ta bi se nkan they talk about advanced plan won so ni pa e to ta se siwaju they talk about well thought out plan an so e ro ta ni lati no nkan ta bi se to you say strategy you say i want to achieve something this is my strategy for achieving that thing nigba to ba pe mo fe ni on kan ile pa mi le le yo ona ti ma gba to ni ti ma fi ni ile pa na well then Nitori na. Say about the plan of God. O to ba je ti Olorun. The program of God. O to le je ti Olorun. The purpose of God. O to le je ti Olorun. Good news for all of you men today. Man is God's strategy. Mo ni ire ire iroya yo fun gbogbo eyin o ko ni bi loni eni o ko ni oni ogbon Olorun. Sam Hey, only that video we can jump. Beginning from verse one, or that I will not take verse one. I will start sometime uh, somewhere lower than verse one. But from verse one, you see the service there, praising the Lord. To ba ola tese kini mo le te mo ni be le biki kam la tese kini. To ba to ba wo ti be. Olo ni da vi di be si ni olo no. Talk about the glory of God. O sone ko go olo no. Talk about the heavens that God has created. O sone ko o no ti olo o ti da. He talk about the moons and the stars. O sone ko ira. O sone ko o shuba ti ira wo. The works of the fingers of God. Na wo e she ka olo no. Talk about the galaxies of the heavens. O sone ko o to melo jo o to mo. Talk about the stars, millions and millions and millions of o to le pa awon ira wo ni million ni opolopo ke mo ye o the millions and the millions of them o to na ni pe osupa na bo se po to and it says i consider the heaven only mo wu awon ona wo ye but universe the aye o se teju to the 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 fathomless universe and the aye bo se je ya gba mi to the universe that you know you cannot just you can't think about it so vast so big so mighty na gba la aye la pe o to bi o ki jojo the same say o lo ira bi di wi pe mighty mighty works of god on one side mo wo gbo je ka bi ti ka bi ti jo won se mo gbe ti e gbe ko then in verse 3 it says i see man on the other side here ni e se ke pa o ni ona ona keji mo ri omo eniyan be what is man o ni kini eniyan i consider the star tin ba wo awon irawo ti mo ti mo wo osupa it of them many times bigger than our world iko ko won ni opolopo igba ni won to bi ju aye ta wa ninu re lo look at all that what is man ti mo ba wo gbo ise owo olorun wa kini eniyan i was going to buy you all these things be mi ma fe ti ye lori nkan won yi gege bi eniyan le ran ran o mi se when i look at the heavens and all those uh, galaxies and all those stars man is insignificant in consequence in my own mind olori david ri pe nigba ti won ba wo awon orun osupa ati irawo atun wo mere mere to lo ju orun ti ma wo eniyan eyan je bi nti le be won i see you god you are not like me o ni mo wo ewo olorun o da bi mi it looks like those moons those stars those suns those galaxies they mean nothing to you o da bi pe osupa ni o irawo ni o awon awon ohun to lo ju orun o da bi ko won je gege ni waju re olorun to me like all these great things in the universe all the gold in the universe all the silver in the universe all the precious stones in the universe and all those wonderful wonderful precious things you created it appears to me god i see all those things are immaterial to you compared to the attention you give to man olorun ti ba ti mo wa ti e ti to fun omo eniyan se lo e pe gbogbo wugura to wa ni ile aye gbogbo badaka to wa ni ile aye gbogbo awon oku ta ye bi to wa ni ile aye awon eya nu mere mere to ju ta le boju ri o da pe won aja ma kan kan ni waju re bo se fi e ti eniyan at this time cry as not even die as not die for man ni e gbogbo ti olorun da bi ri ko iwe ye christi ko ti ku fun omo eniyan what the sun saw was just the love god for man o ti oni david olorun david 
because she only know Okori. Because they love this knowledge, although they are men, they are not even ordinary men, they are born again men, they still live short of God's ideal for their lives. So they are low yet your money, and you only eat back and more than pay your more long. It's great, yeah, you don't pay all that to me, no, 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 so then we have three points. As we answer the psalmist's question, what is man? Hey, you see that question in verse 4. Says, what is man? It's like you say, what is this person by the way? Who is that person? What is this person? What is this thing by the way? It's a question of content. It's a question that, it's a question that, of, of, of ridicule. What is man? But God gives serious answer to that contentious question. That's my point number one. God's presentation of man. God's presentation of man. Point number two. God's partnership with man. The partnership of the Almighty God with man. Then number three, God's provision for man. Now as we look at God's presentation of man, what do we find? The question again, what is man? And here comes the answer. Number one, man is the crown of God's creation. Man is the image, the very image of God. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so, God created man in his own image. Oh, how important that one is. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him in. Male and female created him he there. Before I come to that, first of all, understand this. When God created the sun, He merely spoke the sun into existence. When He created the stars, He merely spoke them into existence. When He created the fishes and the animals, He merely spoke and they came into being. When He was to create man, so He didn't just speak. He formed man in his own image. In fact, we are told in chapter 2 of Genesis that God created man, he formed man, he shaped man out of the dust of the earth. That's Genesis 2, verse 7. Man alone was the handiwork of the Almighty God. In that sense, I mean, handiwork created, touched, formed, shaped by God directly, actively himself. What a great privilege that one is. That's why man is the crown of the creation of God. And in verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, there is something there in verse 7. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and 
glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Well, here he's telling us that every man is the image and the glory of God. All those things has come in and has destroyed some of that image. But at the time God created Adam, all the other creatures in the world wanted to know how God looked like. Man will provide them the answer. The Delilah wanted to say, how does God look like? I don't know him. He only spoke in his heaven there, and I came into me. How does he look like? If all, those, all those fishes and all those uh, uh, bees in the field, if they wanted to see how does God look like, they didn't need to go to heaven. Looking at Adam, they would see God. He was perfectly uh, an image of the Almighty God. Well, that's a message to you today. If you are a child of God, if you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus, because you know, Adam fell eventually, and he lost that privilege of showing forth the glory of God to all those who saw it, it was no longer the glory of God. But now the Bible says all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. But when you give your life to Christ, and Christ comes into you, doesn't the Bible say Christ in you the hope of glory? And when Christ comes into your life, listen to me, if you are a child of God, you are to image God to all those who see you. If you are truly born again, all those who see you ought to see God in you. Uh, you, you see some people who say they are born again, and they are so unlike God. Paradise has not been restored in their life. And yet that's what Jesus came to do. That when he saves you, you go back to where Adam failed. In your behavior, in your lifestyle, the way you talk, how you respond, your reaction, your behavior to your wife, how you do to your children, your actions in your place of work, everywhere they go, you go in the world, men are supposed to see you and remember how God looks like. Like the uh, animals were to see Adam and see how God looks like. That's why you find in John chapter 14. John chapter 14 verse 8. Philip was speaking to Christ. Remember, Christ was the express image of God. Remember, he was the express uh, image of his person. That was Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 tells us. Try to open there. Uh, let me establish this thing. I'm trying to pass across to you. Uh, go back to uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 1. Read John for some time. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. He has in this last day spoken unto us by his son, that's Jesus Christ. Still talking about that son in verse 3. He says that son is the brightness of the glory of God. And the express image of God's person. 
Mm. Now you understand. Exactly what Adam was to God. That's what Christ is to God now. And when you are born again, Christ restores the glory that Adam lost into your life. Now the expectation that people had of Christ, they now have it of you. That's why you are a Christian. What did they expect of Christ? Go back now to John chapter 14. And verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficed all. Every time in your family, you are putting up a particular behavior. Your, your wife is asking, My husband, show us the father. Every time you talk in the house, every time you talk to your children, every time you talk in your place of work, every time you talk in your church, you talk in the family, men in the world they are asking you, show us the father. By your life, by your, by your behavior, by your action, by your work, by your likes and your dislikes. Show us the Father. And it suffices all. Every time the people are asking you, is this right? Is that right? The only question they are asking, you are the image of God. You are the picture of God. Show us the Father. Those of you who are in the offices, the people in the offices, they are asking you, we don't know God. Show us how he looks like. Those of you are in the school, they are asking you, your teachers, your fellow students, and they say, show us the father. Those of you are in coaching, those sisters are asking you, every time you put up a behavior, show us the father. Those of you are husband, wife is asking you every time, show us the father. Those of you are father, your children are asking you, you don't know the heavenly father, how he looks like, but you know you are our earthly father. Show us the father, and it suffices all. All those of you are pastors, those of you are church leaders, those of you are house fellowship leaders, the people are asking you, we can't see God, but you are his representative. Show us the father, and it suffices all. Those of you are born again, and the people in your family, they know they are not born again, and they say, they say, we know we are sinners, but uh, you, you are people of God. And every time you put up a behavior, everything that you do, they are saying, Show us the Father, and it will suffice us. When you put up any behavior that is ungodly, you are misrepresenting the Father. All sorts of people, anytime you speak any word that is unclean, that is defiling, that is corrupting, any of those girls, or any of those women, or any of those sisters in the church, they will be asking, is this the father? Is this the father? Every time you put up any behavior of anger, and you lose your temper, and you spoil everything, they will be asking, is this the father? Every time you use an abusive language, or a, a language of uh, cursing, they will be asking you, is this the father? Every time you speak a lie, and then you say, hey, I was only playing with you. He asked you a question. He is the father. In verse 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the father. Oh, I pray you will be able to say that in your life in Jesus' name. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how says thou then? She was the Father. Philip, don't you understand? I 
I'm showing the Father to you already. When you see me, you have seen the Father. Wonderful. Wonderful the day in your life. That you can speak to all the people. Sinners and believers alive. Saints and sinners alive. Children, husbands, close family, those who know you closely in your home, in your family, and those who don't know you see you from a distance. Alive. It's a wonderful day in your life when you're able to tell them when you have seen me, you have seen God. I represent God before you right now. Because that's the crown of God's creation. You have to image God to represent God to all those who see you. In Psalm 139, verse 14. Psalm 139, verse 14. And it says, I, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Say that to yourself. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? You wonder, why do some men, they prefer to be another man other than themselves? You find a young boy, sometimes he's even an adult. He's in love with another man, he hates himself. He has forgotten that he's specially made by God. There are no two people like me. And yet he will be in love with another man. He ate that man is the only man that is good. He's the one that has good stature. He's the one that has good complexion. He's the one that has good weight. He's the one that has good eyes. He's the one that has good hair. He's the one that has good body parts. Me, I don't have, I'm not good. They are all always in love with the other man. They are always against themselves. Why are you like that? That kind of negative self-image will do a lot of damage to the purpose of God for your life. Touch yourself and say, thank God for me. Thank God for me. Say it, say it like you believe it. Thank God for me. There are not two people like you. You are unique. You are special. There's no man that's that exactly like you in the whole of this world. You are the crown of God's creation. Now, that's the first presentation of man. Not only that, as we are still answering that question, what is man? Man is God's partner in procreation. <laughs> that, there is a lot in that. You know when they are reading, uh, when we are in our marriages, in our weddings, they say uh, God created marriage for procreation. But can I tell you, First Timothy chapter two verse thirteen? Was a little uh, further than that. And in verse thirteen it says, "For Adam was first formed, then Eve." That means that the first woman in this world came out of man. Wonderful news for all you men. If all those women say we are the people giving birth to all the children. <laughs> Don't you know? The first woman that gave birth to all those men and all those women came out of man. In Genesis chapter 2, you know it, but open it. And in verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and his legs, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. 
Only one or two more, only she got one down, or she saw. Only you're going to know if you want your heart, or if you're not devoted. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from her made thee a woman and brought her unto the man. Only one or two, if you go out, you're only out on a normal journey, or the motor on a normal. What does that mean? That means that for those of you who are married, that woman in your life was brought by God from your side. That is the bone of your bone, the flesh of your flesh. This is a great responsibility to you to love that woman and to care for your wife. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and in verse, uh, verse 8, uh, we can even start from verse 7. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and the glory of man, but the woman is the glory of the man. That will bring some shame on those men that do not take care of their wives. That one is your glory. Your Our sisters are crying. The, our brother, when will pastor speak to the man? My husband is not taking care of me. My husband is not giving me attention. My husband does not care whether I live or I die. Whether I'm sick or I'm well, my husband could careless. I'm happy or I'm sad, my husband cares less. The woman is the glory of the man. Yeah, but for, it, for the man is not of the woman, that means the man did not come out of the woman, but the woman came out of the man. When you get home, tell your wife. Although you are the mother who has all these children, you came out of me. But please, when you are going to say that, that confers great responsibility on you. You cannot watch that woman suffering and you do nothing about it. You cannot see your wife hungry and you do nothing about it. You cannot see your wife naked and ill clad and you do nothing about it. And you cannot see your wife wearing rags all about and you do nothing about it. Because she came out of you. There is a sense in which you are a partner. In the, God, in the procreation program of God, and your wife is not partner in that. And in verse 9, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Wonderful privilege. Let every privilege that is responsibility. God created that woman for your purpose. And you are going to give account to God how you relate or you react or you behave or you treat that woman. Now, God's presentation of man. And uh, the number three now is God. Uh, man is God's representative on earth. Man's governor on earth. You will see there in uh, Psalm 8, verse 6. Psalm 8 and verse 6. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast crowned him with glory. Sorry. The, thou has put all things on thy feet. You made man to have dominion over the works of your hands. Uh, you say it, it does not exclude the women also. It does not exclude the women. The women are also there in that uh, Psalm 8 verse 6. They also have dominion over the works of the hands of God. But now join that with 
Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. And what do you find? You find that even woman herself is under the dominion and the rulership of man. In Genesis 3 16, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, in sorrow that shall bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Now he shall run over thee. Genesis to Rick is a second. Logon, for we know no we pay. A mute or point out, you know you ready to go. Nick, what you want, my be more. Lord of all, any better, you're my party. Only your demand, your Lord, you read. So even the woman is under the leadership and the headship of the man. If you want to prove it, uh, find out when the dog is making noise, uh, maybe your wife wants to pass and the dog is barking, barking, barking. Who goes there to drive the dog away? The woman will be crying. It's you that go there and say, Can't get out of the place. And then you rescue the woman. So, baby, you when some thugs or some hooligans are in the street and they are trying to threaten all those girls and all those women, and once they see your wife and they see you by her side, you know, they don't come near her because she's under protection. Because of the protection that is over that woman. That's why it's wonderful to be a man. Great privilege. But as you are the governor of God on earth, you also have a great responsibility under God. You are going to give account to God how you spend your life as a man. Uh, you are going to give account of your skill. Oh, now, God's presentation of man. Number four, man is an object of God's special care. You see in the Psalm 8 and verse 5, for, the, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Now listen to this. Thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now, you see there the presentation God makes of man. The crown of his creation. His partner in procreation. His representative upon the earth. His object of special care and honor. So then you find the answer to that question, what is man? And God places great value upon man. In every age, God will do nothing in the world without a man. When he wanted to write the Bible, whom did he use? He used a man. When he was going to rescue, to create a nation, out of a nation, the tribe of Israel, what did he do? He got a man. When he wanted to bring Israel out of the bondage of Egypt, what did he do? He looked for a man. And when man was lost in sin and trespasses and needed a savior, what did he do? He sent a man. When God raised up his uh, when Jesus came into the world and he raised up his team of people that he was Release his power and ministry unto. What did he do? He got men. God is always in need of a man. Justice standard of Truth has fallen in the street. Equity cannot enter. Truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh him a prey victim. It was a very, very bad condition in Israel. Evil was raining. Righteousness was trodden on the street. It was a very bad condition. The Lord saw it and he was so displeased because there was no justice, no righteousness in the whole land. 
And at such a time, what will God do? Oh, he saw that there was a problem. Would he send an angel? Would he send a prophet? What will God do? He said in verse 16, he wanted to see if there was a single man and he could change all of that situation. God is always in search of a man. A man to join partnership with God. In every nation, he's always looking for a man. I pray God will find you. I pray that before you die, God will locate you somewhere in his plans and purposes here on earth. What is life? If not lived in the purpose of God, what is your life? If not lived in the program of God, what is your life? If not lived in the plot, in the, in the, in the carrying out the plan and the program of God, in every age, in every generation, in every community, in every tribe, in every family, God is always looking for a man. In Ezekiel chapter 22, Ezekiel chapter 22, in part in our nation today, God is looking for a man. He does not care with the tribe of that man. He does not care the age of that man. He does not care the family background of that man. God does not care for the educational attainment of that man. He's only looking for a man. A transformed man. A man of God. A God-fearing man. A committed man. A yielded man. A consecrated man. An available man. That's what God is looking for. If you can find that man, he will turn the whole community. If you can find that man, he will change the history of a whole family. If you can find that man, he will take over a whole nation. In Ezekiel chapter 22 and in verse 21, the people of the land have used oppression and they have exercised robbery and have uh, vexed the poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. That was evil. 29. And I sought for a man. A man among them. Telling you something. Right now, as we are here, in this assembly, all of you sitting down here, God is still looking for a man. A man in that family. A man in your own family. A man in your own community. God is looking for a man who will make a difference. A man who will say, I'm going to make my life different from all these other people. A man that will say, I will join affinity with God. And God and me, we will do something different. A man that will say, you may be a man in the kingdom of God. You may be a man of, a man of the Bible. You may be a man in gospel world. You may be a man in academic world. You may be a man in medicine. You may be a man in engineering. You may be a man in, in, in social in the social world. He may be a man in industry. He may be a man anywhere. Who will join with God? I will say, I believe God. That when God created me in the beginning, He meant me for a great purpose. And I will not rest until that purpose is fulfilled. I join partnership with God. To see that the plan of God, program of God is fulfilled for my generation. Particularly now, God is in search of a man. Our country needs a man. Our state needs a man. Your community needs a man. Your company needs a man. Your district church needs a man. A man that will be different from all the other men in that district. 
A man who will believe God more than all other men in that district. A man who will walk with God more than all other men in that district. A man that will be consecrated to God more than all the other men in that district. A man that will pray to God and commune with God more than all the other men in that district. A man that will live a holy life, distinctly holy life, different from all the other men in that district. God is still looking for a man till now. I saw for a man. I pray we'll find you. I pray we'll find you. He found Abraham in his own time. And when he was going to testify about Abraham, God said, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I do? When in your life, when you get to that point, when God will say to himself, How can I hide from Joseph? How can I hide from Muiwa? How can I hide from Kule? How can I hide from Wale? That thing which I do. Why are you going to get to that point in your life? When God cannot do anything about your life without first informing you. God told he, co- he commented on Abraham. He said, I cannot hide from him. Anything that I do, because I know him. That's in Genesis verses 17 to 19. Genesis and in verse 19 God says I know him can God say that about you that I know him I know that brother I know that man I know Abraham I can testify about him I can witness about him I can confirm I can vouch save him I know him that he will command his children and his household after him all you fathers there. You know what God said about this man? He said, I know him. He command his children. When God sees the looseness about how you bring up your children, when God sees that you are not influencing your children for good, when God sees that although you are a Christian father, but you allow your children to go their ways, you cannot command your children. And your household, that includes your wife, your younger sister, your younger brother, and all those who are living with you at home, you command them after you to follow after your path. Command them that they will keep the way of the Lord. Oh, you find some Christian men. They are so permissive. They cannot influence the people that are even closest to them. How can you influence the world? They are born again. They are living with an unbeliever in the same room. That unbeliever will bring a girl to that place. They will be committing a sin. And this man will keep sure he cannot talk. Unbeliever man, you see the younger sister is there. He just do anything she likes. He says, well, that's her own life. He has no influence. Unbeliever man, the wife is there. You see the life of the wife is completely down. Everything has run at ground. No spiritual life again. Nothing useful of that God can use anymore in the life of the woman. He said, well, I'm going to heaven. He has no influence. He cannot influence that woman for God. No, that's, that's not Abraham. God said, I know Abraham. Command. Command. The household after him. not be making apology for righteousness. We will not be making apology for holy stand. We will not be making apology for righteousness. 
do, do. Anybody within your influence? Child? Younger brother? Younger sister? Why? Anybody? Co worker? And they're under your influence. Like Abraham, you command the household after you to follow after the way of righteousness. Abraham, what can you use? Some people that uh, they are praying, God, use me, use me. God cannot even use them in their home. How can we go use them in the world? God said about Abraham, I know him. He found Abraham for the race for the tribe of Israel. And he found Joseph for his family. In Genesis chapter 45. Genesis 45 verse 4. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And he came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves. Here is a man with a sense of destiny. He says, don't be angry. Don't fight yourself that you sold me thither. For God did send me, not you. God did send me before you to preserve your life. He said, you don't understand. Don't fight yourself. Everything you did in my life, it was God that was doing it. That was a man who had a partnership with God. Why do you have all the problems in the world today? Yeah, brother so and so and the other person they are fighting. Brother so and so and the other person is uh, fighting. He says so and so that uh, will not allow me to get to where God wants me to get to. He so and so that is blocking my way. He so and so that is hindering God in my life. He so and so that is frustrating the plan of God in my life. You don't know God. If you know God, and you have a, a sense of destiny, you say, anything that happens in my life, God sent you to preserve life, sent you to sow, to sell me. It was the plan of God. In verse 7, and God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So that man said, it's God that is working in my life. It's God that is working in my life. Take my claw. Cloth, cloth. Remove my cloth. Make me naked. Throw me into the pit. Bring me out of the pit. Send me to slavery. To slavery. Take my cloth. Put it in the blood. Go and tell lies about me. Put me to slavery. Send me to slavery. It is God that is working my life. They are slavery. Give me great position. Make me to become lifted up. Raise up a bad woman. No, no, raise up a bad woman. Let her seduce me and try to put me in sin. Let her tell lies against me. Let my man, my master, just put me in prison without listening to my words. It is God that is working in my life. Tell me to that uh, uh, prison. Give two dreams to two people and use me to solve their problem. And I told one of them, don't forget me when it is well with you. And that man forgot me. For two years, he never even remembered the man that helped him. I will not allow any bitterness in my life for that. Because it is God that is working in my life. 
God will give a bad dream, I want dream to uh, uh, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Then, let him remember, let him remember who will help me with that dream. And I remind that man that forgot me two years ago, there is Joseph, you have forgotten him. Let them come and bring me out of the prison. Because the lie that the woman told against me was ever found to be a lie, that was not why you brought me out of prison. You brought me out of prison because there is a higher service to do. That doesn't matter, lie or no lie, God is working in my life. And then bring me out of that prison. Let that man tell me his dream. And eventually I give him the interpretation. And now at last, my dream of more than 13 years ago, my dream of more than 13 years ago, now it comes to pass. And now I'm lifted up in the whole of Egypt. It is God working in my life. Through all the ups and the downs, all the good things and the bad things, all the appreciation of men and all the lies of men, all the approval and the disapproval of men, all their frowns and their smiles. I know it is God working in my life. Why should I be worried? Why should I pray? Is it not God that is working in my life? That sent me before you to preserve life? And when those, those my brothers come, and then they come from, to Egypt to come and buy food, and I see them, and they are talking, I don't, they, don't know I under, they didn't know I understood what they were saying. And then I listen to everything. And I dared as if I didn't know them. And I dealt hardly with them. And I pushed them here and there to soften them, to bring them to a state of realization of their sins. And eventually, I disclosed to them, I am Joseph. Before you to preserve life. My life is not in the hand of any man. My destiny is not in the hand of any man. You know, people don't know God. They say, his brother so and so is disturbing me. He's a so and so that is delaying me. He's uh, Mr. So and so in the office that is not allowing my life to come to pass. You don't know your God. And you know your God. You know your destiny is not in the hand of any man. Anywhere you get to in life. Anything you do in life. Any achievement in life. What God has brought, not what any man has brought to your way. God found Abraham for the, for, the, for the nation of Israel. He found Joseph for his family. He found Moses for his people, Israel. To bring them out of the land of Egypt. He found Joshua for his tribe. He found Peter among his disciples. There were disciples and there were disciples. Peter was a special one. He found Paul among all the Pharisees. There were Pharisees all over, but Paul was special. And God brought him out. And he made an apostle out of him. Oh yes, he had to strike him down on the way to Damascus. God had to strike him down, cut him down on the way to Damascus. God had to take away his eyes on the way to Damascus. But that's what God always does. Anybody God wants to use as a partner, he strikes you down for He first of all removes your sight, he makes you blind. Blind to this world so you can see eternal things. Why is it that you are fighting and struggling with God? He wants to make you his partner. He has to break you down first of all. He has to strip you naked first of all. Before he will clothe you with himself. 
Before he will give you the sight of heaven. And he did that to Paul. He struck him down. And then he raised him up again. That's what God always does. He found Nicodemus among these crowds. You see all these people? They were men. But not ordinary men. They were men of God. In John chapter 1 verse 6. John chapter 1 verse 6. And verse, and verse 7. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. I pray you will be a man from God. I pray your wife will look at you and, and, and speak to other women. Say, there was a man sent from God. And the name of that man, he mentions your name, my husband. I pray that your children will look at you. Say, there was a man sent from God. And he mention your name, he says, our father. I pray that this church, in your district and your group, they will look at you and one day, maybe you die, maybe after you have died, maybe when you are no longer here, maybe something happens and you are no longer around, and then they are going to speak, and they say there was a man sent from God, his name, then they mention your name. John was writing about another John. And he says, I am John. But there's another John that I want to talk about. He was a man sent from God. And he came for a witness. To be a witness of the Lord. That all men through him might believe. In Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And verse 22. Ye men of Israel. Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as you also yourselves know. <laughs> I pray God will approve your life. God approve the life of Abraham. He approved the life of Joseph. He approved the life of Moses. Joshua, Peter, Paul, and all the others. I pray that your life will be approved before God. We go now to the last point, and that's God's provision for man. One of the things that David the psalmist could not understand. He said, Why are you mindful of man? Why are you visiting him? All the time you are, I'm going to see man. I'm going to see man. I'm going to see whether he has any problem. I'm going to see whether he has any need. What is special about man? man. Because God loves man. God loves you as a man. And he has provided for you seven things God provided for man. Number one, yeah, we are told in Genesis chapter 2, and verse 7. And he says, God, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul. He provided breath, life unto man. So, you have life, that's the first thing God has given you. Spend it well to his own glory. Number two, he provided man suitable accommodation. We are told in verse 8, God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and he put a man there whom he had found. That's no reason why you should not have accommodation over your head. You know, there are men that until the time they want to get married, they will still be asked, Bro, can I live with you over there? Bro, can I please cut with you over there? Bro, can I please manage one bed with you over there? When are you going to have your own? God created man and he provided him accommodation. 
If you will pray today, that's part of provision God has made for you as a man. Number three, God provided man good, nourishing food. In verse 9, God pray, uh, God made out of the ground to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. You see, God provided food for man. And if you are a man, why should you have no food in your mouth? Why should you be hungry all the time? That will change today. I said that that will change today. Because you are important to God and you are going to pray. But now, one of the things you will pray for, God, give me my, my daily bread. Daily basis, I don't want to hunger anymore. I don't want to beg anymore. I want to have food sufficient for me. Number four, God provided man worthy employment, occupation. That means it is an abnormal thing for you as a man to lack job. In verse 15, the Lord God took the man and he put him into the garden of Eden and to dress it and to keep it as employment. He gave him work. And if you are jobless, God will give you a job. Number six. Number five. God provided man wonderful intellect, intelligence. And then in verse 19. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. And every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. Every animal in the world, Adam gave them their names. Isn't that wonderful? Every plant on the field, every insect on the field, every fish in the water, every creature in the water, every stone in the world, and every everything you can see in the world. And Adam gave them names without giving two names to uh, the said uh, one name to the two animals. I think that will take serious intelligence. Why are you students? Can I see your hand up? I don't know why. When I read, I forget. Hey, I don't know why. My, my, my brain, I don't know what's wrong. What's wrong with your brain? God gave you perfect intelligence. Oh, yes, some of it lost when man sinned. But thank God what we lost in Adam, we have gained in the second Adam, in the last Adam, Christ. And so, you have intelligence. Uh, your exam is coming and then you are going to unbeliever and there are the people that will be teaching you. You should be the one teaching them. The exam is coming and unbelievers are running after expo. And you too, believer, running after expo. What is wrong with you? And some of us, we, we say, I don't know why. I read Bible, I cannot remember. I cannot remember what's wrong with your brain. You can't quote a single verse of scripture correctly. What happened to your intelligence? Apart from that, what of the Holy Ghost that has been given to you? Out of the provision God gave man is a wonderful intellect. Finally, I know you are waiting for this. But 
provided for man a beautiful wife and companion. And in verse 18, the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And in love, verse 21, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and his slept, And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And so if you are here today, you have no wife. And you are old enough to get married. You have job in your hand. And you are qualified, you are a bona fide, a marriageable man. Well, I have good news for you. One of the provisions God makes for you as a man, beautiful wife and companion. And you have no reason to say, no, I don't know why. I'm never lucky. I'm not always fortunate. Every time I go to this sister, she says no. I go to that other sister, she says no. Pray well today. You go now. They will not say no again. What is man? What am I? A special creature in the hand of God. What are you? The crown of the creation of God. What are you? The partner of God in procreation. What are you? A representative of God. And you are a special object of God's care and love. That is what you are. That's why God has abandoned the sun. And abandoned the moon. And abandoned the stars. And he abandoned all the galaxies. And he concentrated on you alone. Mom. That was why God abandoned the angels. And he forgets about them. And he focuses attention on man. And he says, look at man. The work of my hand. Look at man. The image of myself. Look at man. The express image of my person. My likeness. Look at man. The one I have gave my, given my son to die and to shed his blood for. And I'm looking for that man to join with me. To fulfill, to fulfill my purpose for his life. I'm looking for that man, like Abraham, like Joseph, to join me so I can fulfill my purpose for their life. I'm looking for that man of faith, that man of destiny, who knows that nothing happens in my life without the knowledge and the permission of God. That man I'm looking for who says I know that destiny is working in my favor. I know that God is working in my life till he guides my life. He's looking for that man. That man who knows that Satan is not the pilot of my life. That man who knows that the enemy is not the pilot of my life. That man who knows God ruled in my life. And everything God worketh it for me. He's looking for that man now. That man that will change this world. That man that will change this community. That man that will lead people from darkness to life. That man whose life will show Christ to other people. Are you that man? Can you be that man? Will you be that man? I want you to rise up on your feet. I say, Lord, I will be that man. 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 I give myself to you. I make myself available. Make me that man. I will be that man. I must be that man. I can be that man. Lord, take my life. Like you took Abraham. Like you took Joseph. Like you took Peter. Like you took Paul. Oh yes, knock me down. Strike me like you struck Paul. Yes, Lord, take away my son. 
that you did it to Paul. After all, I know when you finish. You raise me up again. And you give me sight again. Do it in me, Lord. Do it in me, Lord. Do it in me, Lord. Are you praying tonight? Are you praying tonight? Are you praying today? Are you praying this afternoon? Are you praying upon the Lord? Are you crying to God? Oh God. Oh God. I am that man. I am that man. I am your strategy. I am your method. I am your Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. And he will use you. Because you know he has made provision. Everything you need. To live a happy life. A happy life. A joyful life. A meaningful life. Has been provided by God. Reach out and catch your own.